Chapter 12 is about organizational structure, style, and people issues. Alongside a well-considered strategy, there exists the need for an organization, its management team, and people to deliver the strategy. This is considered under four main headings. Building the organization's structure, number one. Choice of management style and culture, number two. Types of organizational culture, number three. An organization structure for innovation, number four. The chapter then finishes with a section on motivation and staffing in strategy implementation. There's also a section at the beginning of the chapter on whether strategy is decided first and then organizational structure, uh, or whether strategy and structure are interlinked. And you can read about this in section 12.1 of the chapter. It's difficult to summarize in this short um, material. In building the organization's structure, it's essential to start by reconsidering its purpose. This will often provide some basic guidance on the structure required. In addition, there are eight main elements in organizational design principles. The age of the organization, the size of the organization, whether it's big or small, the centralization, decentralization of the organization, the overall work and its products, the technical content of the organization, the tasks in different parts of the organization, the culture of the organization, and its leadership. All these elements will be interrelated with the organization's strategy. Every organization has the choice of changing its culture and style when it changes its strategy. In many cases, a change of style is essential when a fundamental change of strategy is proposed. The content of the culture and style depends on the strategies proposed and there needs to be a degree of strategic fit between the two areas. Importantly, culture and style take time to change and may move more slowly than the proposed strategy. Given the complexity of the relationships between strategy, structure and style, Miles and Snow identified four different types of organization that capture these. The four organizational types are defender organizations, prospector organizations, analyzer organizations, and reactor organizations, each having associated styles of management and leadership. Turning then to the structure that is appropriate for the strategy, and the relationships with strategy, the, there are six different types of organizational structure. Number one, the small organization structure, which is self-explanatory. Number two, the functional organization structure, which is mainly used in small and medium-sized companies for where you have one main product range. As organizations develop further ranges, it's often necessary to divisionalize, and this is the third organizational structure. Each division has its own functional structure, marketing, finance, production, etc. As organizations become even more diverse in their product ranges, the headquarters may just become a holding company structure, and this is number five. An alternative form of structure for companies with several ranges of products is the matrix organization, where joint responsibility is held between a product structure and some other organizational format, such as a functional structure or a geographical structure. This type of organization has some advantages, but it is difficult to manage the matrix structure successfully. In building the most appropriate organization structure, it's important to keep in sight the need for simple, cost-effective structures. Environmental factors such as market change and complexity will also impact on the proposed structure. In general, increased change in complexity suggests more flexible, less centralized structure. All organizations must be able to innovate as part of the strategic process. But such innovation needs to be commercially attractive if it's to be viable. An organization structure that integrates and coordinates all the functional areas of a business is desirable. Because innovation is open-ended and flexible, 
The process needs to be experimental with flexible structures, close coordination and power distributed throughout the innovating group. Turning finally to innovation and reward, we have the need to reward good performance and there are powerful methods for doing this in strategic management. However, it may be difficult to develop reward systems that coincide fully with the organization's strategic objectives. Staffing issues such as recruitment, appraisal and training are essential to the implementation of strategy and formal procedures need to be built into the consideration of new or revised human resource management procedures if we are to have effective strategy.